Part 2. Revenge. Interior Church. Day. Several months pass. The church is decorated with cream and pink ribbons and flowers. Guests are chatting in small groups. A few have already taken their seats in the pews. Anita and Roselle, both with long dresses and updo hairstyles, stand off to the side in the vestibule. Bride's late? Typical. How long are we going to wait? I don't know. I'll ask my mom. She waves over Janice, who rushes over and embraces Anita. Anita, so glad you're here. Ow, mom, you're smushing me. Sorry, honey, I'm just so excited. Aren't you? I mean, I don't know anyone here. Good to see you too, honey. Got a bug fact today? The name for ladybug in Russian translates literally to God's little cow. Well, that's unusual. I thought of it because of the ladybug pin on your dress. She points and Janice looks down. There's a red beetle pin with black hearts on her lapel. Oh yes, it has hearts. So I thought it was a love bug. That's what we called Matilda as a baby. Our little love bug. Actually, love bug usually refers to the common velvet mite, which is an arachnid that lives in... Mom, how long are we going to wait for Matilda to show up? Well, we should at least give it a good... Oh, oh, there they are. Matilda enters through the door of the church. She's wearing a white dress covered in jewels and sparkles. Next to her is Morty in a tuxedo. Both of them are out of breath. My apologies for being late. We had a brief incident in the shower. Morty, don't say it like that. Don't worry, we worked out all the bugs. Morty pulls out his phone. Ew, don't show the picture. I told you, no bugs. Can you at least tell me what kind of a bug? I don't know what kind, but it's horrifying. I figured the expert would know. Morty shows Roselle his phone. Oh, that's a house centipede. Ew, glad you killed it. You shouldn't have. They will hunt the other pests in your home. Ah, but then you're stuck with house centipedes running around. They keep to themselves, and they prefer to hide when it's light. Well, this one should have chosen a better place than my shower. That was a fatal mistake. Next time, if you use a cup and a piece of paper. No way are we coddling bugs in my house. Actually, centipedes aren't really bugs. The word bug refers to true bugs of the order Hermeptera which are characterized by piercing, sucking mouth parts. Janice gently places her hand on Roselle's arm. Roselle suddenly notices how red Matilda's face had become. Oh, sorry. Matilda, Morty, everyone's waiting. Girls, come with me. Anita and Roselle follow Janice to the pews as the ceremony begins. Interior reception hall, evening. In the room, there are multiple round tables with fine china, a lavish head table, and a DJ. No expense was spared on decorations throughout the room, and everything is in the wedding colors, pink and cream. Anita and Roselle are seated near the back of the room and are nearly finished with dinner. Do you know anyone here? Besides immediate family? No. A lot of young people here. Those are Matilda's friends. Wow, she's popular. Always has been. High school, college, always going to parties, always on dates. Who's paying for all this? Morty. He's loaded. He'll buy Matilda whatever she wants. I guess there's plenty of money in politics. Yeah, plenty of money to waste. If he really wanted to make a difference, why not give some of that money to people who need it? Well, he does. Since when? He offered to help fund my research. He doesn't even know you. Remember that day when I told you they brought over wine glasses? I also showed him what I was working on. You never told me. Does that mean you're replacing me with your new secret best friend now? I wasn't hiding anything. I just didn't want you to get jealous. Did Matilda come over when I was at work on purpose to avoid me? Anita, please. Matilda, in her white wedding gown, wraps up chatting with a group of guests and approaches Anita's table. Matilda smiles brightly upon seeing both of them. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, sorta. What's wrong this time? Can't you just be happy for me for one day? Sure, I was happy for you. In the pew. And not standing up there with you. So you wanted to hang out with my friends? Go to the spa and clubs? Pick out dresses? Do each other's hair and makeup? You wanted to do all that? No. But you're my only sister. I would have made you my maid of honor. I guess we're just different then. The photographer calls Matilda away. 
Anita huffs. We're different. She means I'm different. She didn't say that. She'll always find ways to take a jab at me. Well, how about we just avoid her as much as possible and then leave early? Yeah, then all the other guests will start calling me weird and antisocial. When do we get dessert? Is that all you care about? Why? What would you rather do? Revenge. Roselle laughs, then looks at Anita's face. Anita isn't smiling. Once. Just once. She should be the one who's embarrassed and humiliated. She should be the one who isn't allowed to have nice things. What are you saying? Anita gets up from her chair. Roselle grabs her arm. Let go. I'm just going to the bathroom. Roselle reluctantly lets go. Oh. Okay. Anita leaves. Roselle sits quietly for a moment, then waves over Janice. Having fun? Can I ask you, is Anita okay? Oh, honey. Anita's always been challenging. But you must know, having lived with her. She's not bad or anything, just kind of sensitive. Yes, well, after enough years, sensitive becomes exhausting. We had her tested, you know. She's on the spectrum. We didn't want to just pump her full of medication, so we took her to counselors. They encouraged us to let her be herself, but it's been hard. It's just so hard to accept your child is different. And we're hoping that maybe something good would come of it. Maybe she would have a talent in math or music, or maybe find some purpose like you and your bugs. But after all these years, well, I suppose it's never too late for something to emerge. I mean, I was just asking if Anita would, I don't know, do something drastic? Well, she had meltdowns in the past. I guess part of me was hoping she would grow out of that eventually. Well, even if she doesn't, I'm glad you're her friend. I'm going to check on her. Roselle gets up and exits. She goes to the ladies' room, looks inside, sees nobody. She goes to the front door of the reception hall and looks out, seeing nobody. She turns and walks back down the hall and bumps into Anita. Where were you? Outside. I just looked out there and didn't see you. Guess we just missed each other. What were you doing out there? Just getting some fresh air. Sheesh. Anita pushes past her and returns to the main room of the hall. Roselle hesitantly follows. As they head back to their chairs, the DJ calls for the newlywed couple to give speeches. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. There's nobody else in the world I would rather be celebrating my special day with than you. I would also like to thank my mother Janice who made these beautiful centerpieces. I can't begin to describe how special my mother is to me. As Matilda talks, a waiter runs from the kitchen to Morty and whispers in his ear. Morty glances at Matilda, then follows the waiter to the kitchen. Matilda watches them go. We'll be having cake in just a few minutes, so please enjoy yourselves. Matilda whispers to the DJ, who plays another song. Matilda also goes to the kitchen. Roselle watches them go, then looks over at Anita. Anita is cutting and pushing the food around on her plate, but is not eating. Matilda's scream comes from the kitchen. The DJ urges the crowd to keep calm. Who did this? Who ruined the cake? The DJ stops the music. The waiters attempt to stop her, but Matilda pushes past them, seizes the dessert cart, and rolls out the beautiful cake, covered in crawling ants. She steps forward and waves around an empty rectangular glass container. You did this, Anita? That's Roselle's ant farm. No, it was Anita. Why are you blaming me? You always do this. You make yourself be the center of attention and pretend like you're the victim. Well, look at your life and look at mine. Can you really blame me? Yes, yes I can blame you. You think other people haven't gone through stuff? Been hurt? The difference is the rest of us keep going and you just wallow around feeling sorry for yourself. A crowd of wedding guests gather in a circle to whisper and watch the altercation. Stop pretending that we're perfectly equal. You got so many opportunities when I've been passed over again and again. Yeah, and that's your fault too. You act like your doom and gloom mindset is some sort of difficult truth, but it really just makes you an unpleasant person to be around. So that's what I'm supposed to do? Put on a fake voice and a fake smile so that you can put me with all your filtered photos and friends who pretend to like you? Anything's better than what you are now. Morty breaks through the crowd and puts his hand on Matilda's shoulder. My love, you don't have to put up with this. Please, I can't take this anymore. 
don't bother kicking us out. We're leaving anyway. Anita storms out. Roselle quietly leaves a card on the gift table, mouths, I'm sorry, to Matilda, and slinks out after her. Interior apartment. Evening. Roselle slams the door open and hurls her keys on the coffee table. Anita follows closely behind. You stole my ants? Just go outside and get more. And you tried to make it look like I was the one who ruined the cake. I supported you, and this is how you treat me? Why? Why did you do it? Petty jealousy? Matilda doesn't know what I've been through, and neither do you. I know exactly what you went through. I was lonely, too. I didn't know anyone when I came to your school. And everyone laughed at me. We had each other, and that's why we were friends. But you don't treat friends like this. You ruined my grad school thesis. What did I do to you? I'm sorry. I, I need help. Well, I can't help you. Not after this. Sorry, but you need to figure your own self out. Roselle goes to her room and closes the door. Anita trudges in shame to her room. Alone, Roselle types a text message to Morty. I want to apologize again for Anita ruining your wedding. She also ruined my project. If there's any way that I can get help, please let me know because I'm not sure what to do. Interior, break room. Evening. Anita storms in and opens her locker, slamming the door against the other nearby lockers. Her co-workers look at her, but quickly look away. As she's getting her stuff out, Dwayne enters. Anita, please stay until the others have left. Anita tenses as she takes a seat on a nearby chair. Dwayne says goodnight to the co-workers as they leave, and the two of them are the only ones left in the room. Anita, you've been having a serious attitude problem lately. What did I do this time? This is exactly what I'm talking about. You react to these situations as if you're being attacked. So what is this supposed to be? A happy hangout between best buds? If you're not going to take constructive criticism, then you're not the right fit for this job. Are you firing me? I don't like it either, but... Anita tears up, covers her face, and runs to the exit. Dwayne calls after her. Anita! She exits. Interior apartment. Evening. Anita enters the front door in shame. Roselle is on the couch, layering the dirt for a new ant farm. Bug fact of the day. Houseflies taste with their feet, which are 10 million times more sensitive than human tongues. Bug fact of the day. I just lost my job, and I'm screwed if I don't get another one soon. That's not a bug fact. If I don't get a job soon, what am I going to do? You can't afford this place yourself. I guess moving back to your parents' place is a bad idea. After the wedding disaster? I can't show my face. They'd rather I live in a dumpster. It's where I belong anyway. Roselle opens her mouth to comfort her, but presses her lips together and goes back to work. What if you apologize? No, I have to show them. I can't be a failure. Well, good luck with applying. Be sure to check out career fairs too. Anita goes to her room and shuts the door. Interior, hotel meeting room. Afternoon. Around the edges of the room are tables with branded tablecloths featuring retail, e-commerce, fast food, and multi-level marketing companies. Most job seekers enter, taking one look at the selection and leave. A few stay and talk to recruiters. Anita walks around the room, keeping her distance from the tables. She stops when she sees Zelda standing behind a gray and yellow tablecloth that says Fun Gal. Zelda smiles at her. Hello, Anita. You remember me? I'm sorry. I don't think I ever got your name. Call me Zelda, but that doesn't matter. I'm far more interested in you. You're more significant than you think. You probably say that to everyone, but it's nice to hear. If you could see yourself with my eyes, you wouldn't be so cynical. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to recruit. I'm just here because I'm desperate. Zelda stares at Anita until she makes eye contact, then leans in close to her face. I don't believe that's true. You could have come to any of these tables, but you came to this one. I think you're here because you want to be better. You want to be part of something great, and you want to grow. 
Uncomfortable, Anita looks at the table and sees brochures, pens, and packets of powder. Anita picks one up. This is what you showed me before. What is this stuff, anyway? It's a powder to mix in water to make an all-natural drink. And that solves all your problems? No, just the one that's holding you back. Anita looks at Zelda, then looks away back down at the packet. She turns it over and looks at the back side. What's this stuff made of? It's a fungus blend. Organic, of course. Become happier and more popular. Be free from stress and anxiety. Be the fun gal you were always meant to be. Would you like to register? How much does it cost? Nothing. These companies always make you pay for starter kits and products. We don't do that. If you sign up now, you can take a box home to sell right now. And there's an app where you can order more. That's it? That's it. What's the catch? It's 100% commission, so whatever you sell is your success. Can I quit at any time? If you want. Zelda holds out a tablet. On it is a web form for fun gal seller registration. Anita hesitates, then takes it. She fills it out, hits the submit button, and hands the tablet back. Zelda smiles. She reaches under the table and takes out a gray and yellow box, which she hands to Anita. How do I reach you if I have questions? My card is on the inside, but I think you won't have any trouble. I've never done sales like this. Do you have any advice? Don't let anything hold you back. Remember, fun gal is for everyone. Anita attempts a half smile, then turns and leaves. Interior, apartment, evening. Roselle sits on the couch, typing at her laptop. Anita walks in the front door, holding the box with the fun gal logo on the side. Roselle looks up at her. How did it go? Did they give you a bunch of free stuff? They did. For signing up. What? You know that's a scam. They're going to make more money off of you than you will ever make. Well, what am I supposed to do? I need the money. And nobody will hire me. If I can make a few sales, that'll at least be something. Do you think you have the charisma to sell? I don't know. Maybe I do. Might as well try. Okay, so maybe? But I'd appreciate it if you didn't kick me when I'm down. Whoa, I'm not coming after you. I'm just worried. Well, if you're so worried, then why don't you help me get a job? Anita storms off to her room. Over the next few weeks, Anita proceeds to make social media groups for Fun Gal and invites everyone she knows to no response. She makes a fun gal tasting party to no response. She sets up a table outside a supermarket and gets ignored by everyone. Interior, Anita's room, night. Anita sits at her desk, looking at her laptop screen. She aimlessly scrolls through her emails, full of rejection replies. She looks at the packets of fun gal laying on the desk. She picks one up and turns it over in her hands. She reads the list of benefits. Be happier, be popular, be fun. She tears off the top of the packet and looks inside. It's filled with a gray powder. She holds it up to her nose and smells it. She looks back down at the packet. She props it up against her computer and leaves the room. She returns with a glass of water and a spoon. She carefully shakes a little powder in the glass, looks at it, then dumps the rest of the packet in. She stirs it and the powder dissolves. The water changes color to gray. She lifts the glass to her face and smells the water. She takes a tiny sip. She swishes it in her mouth, but doesn't react to the taste. She looks back at the glass and the packet, then takes a bigger swig. She goes back to her computer and soon finishes the whole glass. She closes the laptop, brushes her teeth, and goes to bed.